All right, let's finish up. When I, said that, when I said that Kittle what a looked like... to end things, huh? <laughs> right. I, I said, when I said Kittle looked like every tight end, I brought Higby. I didn't even know Higby was the next guy, but here he is. <laughs> um, we did, and here's and the Wolf starts off with the headline, and this is there's only one. I did not expect this tight end to be in my top eight fantasy projection. <laughs> I remember when we did the tight end show, I think you did the top 12. Top 15. And then, and then, 15 was it really 15 mm -hmm. and and I, and you asked me at the end you said is there any any guy that you're thinking should maybe be on here and i said well one guy higby mm -hmm. and then and then you were like oh yeah you know he you know we talked about him a little bit i, I guess he's weaseling his way up huh he sure has I came out top eight in my projections he's now in my top 12 rankings wise as well after seeing this because none of it seemed that insane we talked about with Cooper Cup, but there could be just a slight passing game volume bump with Stafford back. Mike LaFleur now here, as we, we referenced before, 46.5 pass attempts per game in any starts. According to the Jets, of course, Mike LaFleur, uh, 46.5 pass attempts in any games without Zach Wilson. Uh, also more passing yards, 292 led the NFL in games without Zach Wilson as well, more than Pat Mahomes, more than Justin Herbert, more than Joe Burrow. It's nuts with Mike White and Joe Flacco. So if he has even a slight influence over Sean McVay here, uh, Mike LaFleur, that's going to mean more passing and, and more explosive passing as well. And now who's that pie going to go to? We, of course, know Cooper Cup. I have him going for 30% of the targets. That's no surprise there. But Van Jefferson, still kind of an unknown, more of a deep threat. The running backs don't usually catch a lot of passes in this McVay offense since Todd Gurley's been gone. They've been the lowest in the league over those last five years in running back targets. So enter Higby. He's got plenty of spike week upside. He had a 30-point day last year with Baker Mayfield thrown to him nonetheless. He was top 12 in 41% of his games the past two seasons. Not too shabby there. He had 105 targets and 71 receptions last year. Both were career highs. The big thing is he's never scored more than five touchdowns, which... I don't get why he's six. I wouldn't have thought that was You'd true. I think that's where he would do his damage, but I, that's honestly could screen positive regression that Duck was talking about earlier here. And then you look at the fact that I know we were talking about this one, that 2019 where all the injuries around him, where Robert Woods got hurt and he yep. suddenly and Cooper Cup got hurt and suddenly you got the, the alpha in the offense, Tyler Higby. Yep. Just the fact that he could do this. I know this is three years ago, but the fact that he went 23, 18, 23, 19, and 22 points was the tight end one averaging 20 points per game. Uh, all to close it out. He won me titles that year. So maybe it's just me clinging to that of the past, but we've seen again some of those spike weeks then. Uh, it was insane. He was more than Travis Kelsey that year, 21.4 points per game, closing out the season. That's more than Travis Kelsey's ever averaged in his career. So Higby has that within him, and we know Sean McVay has squeezed it out of him at times in the past, and now there's really no one else besides Cooper Cup that I think is going to be getting thrown to. So with all a few other mouths, I have Kigby getting 17% share, 117, uh, 107 targets. I think he turns that into 77 catches, 700 through two, 732 yards, and five touchdowns. And you got those touchdowns, touchdowns on this sheet. You want yeah, five, I bumped five. it down to five, and he stayed as a top eight tight end just because he's never been over five. So, like, I can't, I can't yeah. force seven. I if you give him the seven, he goes even above Dalton Schultz and becomes a top seven tight end for me, though. So I, I love it. And he goes, he goes to the tight end 16. He goes at pick 140, 150. It's similar to the, the Thielen argument, just unsexy. But you look at it and I don't know, did any of that not make sense? Like, I, no, I, 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 I was sold line. on, I was sold on this one before you made the case. Like, it's saying, you know, he's a, a top 12 tight end. Sure. Like, of a, course, a, he's certainly one of the top eight to 10 guys I would take. So, yeah. yeah, I absolutely see that. And, I mean, part of me, you know, obviously Cup is like a vacuum cleaner with targets and catches and stuff like that. Uh, th that's going to take away from anyone's production, kind of. But, I mean, I also think that having a weapon like that on your team that is going to draw double teams, maybe even triple teams, who knows what, has, has, he's going to be open, dude. Like, I, I think that Higby is a, a great call. And if you're waiting on a tight end, he's a great option. I absolutely agree. Hell, yeah. Let's go. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.